In the 52nd year of the Republic of China, 1963, Dong Zhuobing passed away in Taipei. It has been one sexagenary cycle since then. When it comes to archaeologists or etymologists of the 20th century, Dong Zhuobing's name is always included. However, as time passes, people have become less familiar with the value of his academic achievements. If one reads the commemorative article Mr. Dong Zhuobing of Nanyang and Modern Archaeology, written by Li Ji in March of the 53rd year of the Republic of China, 1964, one can get a general idea of Dong's contributions. Extracts from the article read, My first impression of him was that he was quick to accept modern academic perspectives, and the academic questions he raised fully met the requirements of modern scholarship. For example, the report he completed on the first trial excavation of the Ying Dynasty ruins and the transcripts and notes on the newly acquired oracle inscriptions not only possessed extremely concise reporting style, the entire text can be said to have no superfluous words. But the final question he raised was, are the oracle bone scripts we see today only divination texts from the period of Wu Yi, 1147 to 1112 BC, to Di Yi, 1101 to 1076 BC, and there are no relics from earlier than Song Dynasty. Song Dynasty is also known as Ying Dynasty. If there is none, then outside of the Ying Dynasty ruins, could there exist similar divination texts in other capitals that were destroyed by floods and forced to relocate? He laid the theoretical foundation for a continual excavation of the Ying Dynasty ruins. During this period, he also conducted another very meaningful experimental work. He took photo enlargements of those intersections of inscriptions that could be clearly seen under a magnifying glass to examine the order of the strokes of the inscription. From this kind of examination, he discovered the order of strokes in each inscription. Some followed a fixed habit. Some varied with the times. Some started with vertical strokes, followed by horizontal strokes, while others started with horizontal strokes, followed by vertical ones. These changes in habits can help us determine the age of the inscriptions. He also put a lot of effort into dealing with the many fake oracle bone inscriptions on the market. He patiently made friends with an artist in Anyang who specialized in carving fake oracle bone inscriptions, which gave him a lot of insight into identifying fake inscriptions. If the Sino-Japanese War had not occurred, the development of field archaeology may have taken a different direction. The outbreak of war changed the situation, but the foundation of modern archaeology established before the war had already been stabilized. In the 34th year of the Republic, 1945, which was the year when the war was about to end. He personally transcribed and published the Ying Dynasty Calendar 
of historical events, Lisso printed at Li Village. The statement of Mr. Meng Zhen, Meng Zhen courtesy name of Fu Shinian, that each step forward in the study of oracle bone inscriptions is a step advanced by Yan Tang. Yan Tang, courtesy name of Dong Zhuo Bing, can be said to represent the general opinion at that time from colleagues in the archaeology team at the Institute of History and Philology of the Academia Sinica. After the war, most of his energy was focused on advancing the study of calendrical systems and compiling a comprehensive Chinese almanac. This development of his central interest can be traced back to his work of textual research and interpretation of ancient texts on the four large plates of tortoise shell excavated at the Ying Dynasty ruins in 1929. However, Mr. Dong's academic contributions after the war could have been several times greater according to his standards before and during the war. But his work environment had changed including both the intellectual and material aspects. After arrival in Taiwan, the educational and academic communities were all part of the refugee class, with a deep sense of uncertainty and insecurity about the future. Most of those from the Academia Sinica were taken in by the National Taiwan University as it is an educational institution. Receiving a salary there required teaching a certain number of courses. And naturally, the time left for research was cut to the minimum. During this period, Mr. Dong's energy was largely spent on having to maintain a bare minimal standard of living. His founding of Da Lu Magazine, Continental Magazine, employment at the University of Hong Kong, and his teaching in Taiwan were not truly the work that he wanted to do. Mr. Dong Yantang was 55 years old when he came to Taiwan. Although he wrote several popular articles to promote his past academic achievements, and completed the comprehensive Chinese calendar of historical events at the University of Hong Kong. Strictly speaking, none of these were the best work that he was capable of. Based on his academic background and talent, he could have built a more solid foundation for the study of Chinese etymology. He had the aspiration to do so, but the environment prevented him from achieving this aspiration and forced him to waste his energy on many unrelated areas. This was his loss, his friend's loss, China's loss, and even the loss of the worldwide academic community. I am not able to speak any further as I think of this. After mainland China fell to the communists, Chinese culture scattered across the seas and scholarly aspirations were thwarted. Li Ji's words were almost choked with sobs. Dong Zhuo Bing was born on 24th February Chinese calendar in the 21st year of the Guangxu reign 1895. He passed away on 23rd November in the 52nd year of the Republic, 1963. Originally named Zuo Ren, Zi Yan Tang, studio name Ping Lu. He was a native of Nanyang, Henan province. At the age of six, he became a student of Chen Wendou, who gave him the name Zuo Bing. At the age of 14, he began selling his own works of calligraphy couplets 
and engraved seals. In the fifth year of the Republic, 1916, he graduated from the County Teacher Training Center, and in the seventh year of the Republic, 1918, he entered the Henan Scholar Training Academy. In the eleventh year of the Republic, 1922, he entered Peking University as a non-degree student. In the sixteenth year of the Republic, 1927, he was appointed Associate Professor at National Sun Yat-sen University. In the following year, he became an editor at the Institute of History and Philology of the Academia Sinica, established by Fu Sinian. In the same year, he supervised the first excavation of the Ying Dynasty ruins. Then he was in charge of the fifth excavation of the Ying Dynasty ruins in the 20th year of the Republic, 1931, the seventh excavation in the 21st year of the Republic, 1932, and the ninth excavation in the 23rd year of the Republic, 1934. In the 36th year of the Republic, 1947, he became a visiting professor of Chinese archaeology at the University of Chicago. In the following year, he was appointed an academician of the first session of the Academia Sinica. In the 38th year of the Republic, 1949, after mainland China fell to communist rule, he moved to Taiwan with the government and became a professor at the Faculty of Arts in the National Taiwan University. In the following year, he founded the Da Lu magazine, Continental magazine. In the 40th year of the Republic, 1951, he became the director of the Institute of History and Philology at the Academia Sinica. And in the 44th year of the Republic, 1955, he became a research fellow at the Institute of Oriental Studies at the University of Hong Kong. In the 47th year of the Republic, 1958, he became the head of the Oracle Bone Inscription Research Room at the Institute of History and Philology, Academia Sinica. His works include studies on the dating of Oracle Bone Inscriptions, Ying Dynasty Calendar of Historical Events, First Compilation of Inscriptions from Ying Dynasty Ruins, Second Compilation of Inscriptions from Ying Dynasty Ruins in three volumes, 50 Years of Oracle Bone Studies, and the Comprehensive Chinese Calendar of Historical Events. At the age of 14, in the 34th year of the Guangxu reign, 1908, Dong Zhuobing helped his father in business by charging for his own seal carvings in the market. Later, he only occasionally practiced seal carving, and few were made. His seal impressions were compiled in Ping Lu Ying Chun, which recorded 85 seals engraved between the 26th year of the Republic, 1937, to the 43rd year of the Republic, 1954, including 14 seals for personal use, four seals given to his wife, Xiong Haiping, one seal given to his son, Dong Ming, and the rest engraved as gifts for friends. The preface of Ping Lu Ying Chun states that the impressions of seals engraved between the 23rd year of the Republic, 1934, and the 25th year of the Republic, 1936, were compiled in Xi Xiang Yin Pu. Unfortunately, this volume has been lost. The seal impressions in Ping Lu Ying Chun are not accompanied by any ink rubbings of their side inscriptions. There are many handwritten notes printed below the seal impressions. From this, we know that Dong Zhuobing did not engrave any inscription 
or name on the sides of the seals. Hence, the seals are dispersed without trace and rarely preserved. I have particularly cherished a seal carved by Dong Zhuobing. It was generously gifted to me by Mr. Tang Hongjian. His great kindness and deep friendship is forever engraved in my heart. This seal is not only unrecorded in Ping Lu Yingchun, it is also the only known seal Dong Zhuobing engraved with signature and inscription. The seal reads Dong Zhuobing. The side inscription reads in the first months of the 42nd year, carved in oracle bone script at Ping Lu, Taipei, Zuo Bing. This seal was carved in January of the 42nd year of the Republic, 1953, when Dong Zuo Bing was serving as the director of the Institute of History and Philology at the Academia Sinica. The earliest seal he carved in oracle bone script is the seal with the characters Feng Gui, which is the first seal impression seen in Ping Lu Yingchun. It was dated 26th year of the Republic, 1937. The notes under the seal impression reads, in the 26th year, on the ninth anniversary of the Academia Sinica, I carved four small seals for Feng Gui and his wife. I used various characters in the Oracle Bum script. This is one of them. This Oracle Bum script seal, carved by Dong Zhuo Bing, has been published in the 17th volume of Ying Zheng Xiao Ji, issued in September of the 74th year of the Republic, 1985. It is illustrated in the article, A Compilation of Seals by Dong Zhuo Bing. The seal impressions were provided by Tai Jinglong. This Oracle Bone Script Seal has also been published in Volume 17, Issue 3, Special Issue on Dong Zhuo Bing of Yingling Magazine. Issued in September of the 85th year of the Republic, 1996. In my collection, there is also a piece of calligraphy on a small sheet of paper by Dong Zhuo Bing to be used for a book title with accompanying envelope. It provides a glimpse of the transplant of Oracle Bone Scholarship to Taiwan. The calligraphy on the small sheet of paper reads, Epigraphs on Oracle Bones in the collection of Mr. Li Xuanbo, 7th edition, respectfully inscribed by Dong Zhuo Bing. Calligraphy on the envelope reads, Epigraphs collected by Xuan Bo.
In the upper left corner of the envelope are the printed words National Taiwan University, indicating that it was written in the 38th year of the Republic, 1949, when Dong Zhuobing first arrived in Taiwan to teach at the Faculty of Arts at the National Taiwan University. Li Xuanbo, 1895 to 1974, original name Zhong Dong, was a native of Gaoyang, Hebei province. His grandfather, Li Hongzhao, served successfully as Minister of the Five Ministries. His father, Li Kunying, was Assistant Minister of the Ministry of Revenue, and his uncle, Li Shizhen, was a pioneer revolutionary. Li Xuanbo had been to France with his uncle and graduated from the University of Paris. In the 30th year of the Republic, 1924, he taught at the National Peking University. He later served successfully as the director of the National Registration Bureau of the Ministry of Finance the supervisor of the Kailuan Mining Administration, the Secretary General of the National Palace Museum, and member of the Peking branch of the Central Political Council. In the 38th year of the Republic, 1949, after mainland China fell to the Communists, he followed the government to Taiwan and became a professor of history at the National Taiwan University. He wrote, New Studies on Ancient Chinese Society, The Historiography of Chinese History, Profiles of History, and Other Works. The inscription by Dong Zhuoping for a forthcoming book by Li Xuanbo was written at a time when they were both teaching at the National Taiwan University. When Dong Zhuoping was 12 in the 32nd year of the Guangxu reign, 1906, his mother fell seriously ill, and he obeyed his father's orders to marry a girl with the surname Qian for the purpose of bringing good luck. In December of the 23rd year of the Republic, 1934, at the age of 40, Dong Zhuoping divorced her and in the following winter, he married his student, Xiong Haiping, in Nanking. I have in my collection a letter written by Dong Zhuoping to his second wife, Xiong Haiping, dated 2nd June of the 25th year of the Republic, 1936, when they had been married for six months. Dong Zhuoping went to the Ying Dynasty ruins in Anyang, to work on the excavation, while his wife stayed in Nanking. So, the letter talked mostly about the excavation work, but it also revealed his yearning and deep affection between the lines. The letter reads, Ping Ping, it has been almost 10 hours since I arrived in Zhangde. I arrived at 7.13 in the morning, and now it's almost 5 o'clock. Last night was almost comfortable. From boarding at 2 o'clock, I slept till 6.30 in the morning. After getting off the train, Pan Chue came to pick me up and helped bring my luggage into the city. Then I went alone to find the supervisors. When I arrived at Gao Lou Zhuang, they were having breakfast. I joined them and had two bowls of millet porridge and a steamed bun. Delicious, delicious. I was not tired. I took a car, they walked to Xiaotun. 
This year, three large blocks were dug up, Li and Si in one team, Ying and Gao on another, and Wang, Lao, Ba in one team. Note, Dong Zhuobing's letter, this year three large blocks were dug up, referred to the 13th excavation of the Ying Dynasty ruins, which began on 18th March in the 25th year of the Republic, 1936, and ended on 24th June in the same year. Li and Si Ting referred to Li Jingban, 1900 to 1946, and Si Zhangru, 1902 to 2004. Ying and Gao team referred to Ying Huanzang, 1909 to 1969, and Gao Shuxun, 1910 to 1991. Wang Laoba referred to Wang Xiang, 1912 to 2010, nicknamed Laoba. There are pits with grey soil under the house foundation. Under the pits, with grey soil are ditches. There are dozens of execution pits right next to the house foundation. There are around two to three hundred victims of decapitation. Don't be scared. The bodies are separated from the heads, but are still together in the same pit, which is quite different from the situation in the northwest hill. There are also several hundred oracle bones that are not particularly remarkable here. In the future, they will be taken to Nanking together with those from Kaifeng. Note, the location of the site of the 13th excavation of the Ying Dynasty ruins was in the B and C areas north of Zhaotun village, with an excavation area of approximately 4,700 square meters and a total area of approximately 10,000 square meters. The size of each excavation pit was 160 square meters. Altogether, 52 pits were excavated. Important findings include 127 pits with gray soil, 182 early and late period tombs, three intact small rammed earth walls, wagon pits, headless prone burials, water ditches from the black pottery and grey pottery eras, an intact tortoise shell pit with approximately 300 intact tortoise shell divination pieces and over 10,000 fragmented pieces. The wealth of oracle bones discovered made it into the largest discovery in the years of excavation and mostly were made on 12th June from the YH127 pit. Hence, this later discovery was not mentioned in Dong Zhuobing's letter of 2nd June. I explored the site until 10.30 before entering the city. Guess where I stayed? Ha ha, I've already taken a long nap in this house for over two hours. Young sister, dinner tonight will be jiang mian tiao er, noodles mixed with sauce. Let me tempt you for a while. I'm going to see friends, and then tonight, I still have to write a letter to old Fu and others. Don't be impatient. I'll be back in two or three days. My health is as usual, so don't worry. It's hot here, 90 degrees during the day. Check the thermometer. What's the temperature in Nanking today? I will say this in the Peking dialect. How are you? Yen, 25th year, 2nd June, 1715. Note, Dong Zhuobing's letter mentioned, I still have to write a letter to Old Fu and others. Old Fu likely referred to Fu Sinian, 
who was at the time the director of the Institute of History and Philology at the Academia Sinica. The Institute was responsible for 15 excavations at the Ying Dynasty ruins. The others may include Li Ji, who in the 18th year of the Republic, 1929, became the division head of the archaeology division at the Institute of History and Philology of the Academia Sinica and supervised many excavations at the Ying Dynasty ruins. Afterwards, Fu Sinian, Li Ji and Dong Zhuobing were all appointed as the first panel of academicians of the Academia Sinica in the 37th year of the Republic. 1948. In the 38th year of the Republic, 1949, after mainland China fell to communist rule, the central government moved to Taiwan. Starting from the 43rd year of the Republic, 1954, the various research institutes of the Academia Sinica gradually re-established in Taiwan. In the 38th year of the Republic, 1949, Fu Sinian became the president of National Taiwan University. From the 40th year of the Republic, 1950, to the 44th year of the Republic, Dong Zhuobing served as the acting director of the Institute of History and Philology at the Academia Sinica. In the 38th year of the Republic, 1949, Li Ji became the first department head of the Department of Archaeology and Anthropology at National Taiwan University. And from the 44th year of the Republic, 1955, to the 61st year of the Republic, 1972, he served as the director of the Institute of History and Philology at the Academia Sinica. A flood of distinguished scholars came to Taiwan from the mainland at the time. Dong Zhuobing's letter is only two pages long, but is deeply meaningful. The letter discussed the personnel involved with the 13th excavation of the Ying Dynasty ruins in Anyang, Henan province. The sender's address on the envelope reads Number 26, Guan Dai Leng, Hanyang Indicating that it was written during the excavation of the Ying Dynasty ruins, making it exceptionally precious. The Ying Dynasty ruins is the location of the capital city of Song Dynasty. The excavation of the site marked the beginning of archaeological research in China and laid the foundation for the study of oracle bone inscriptions. Dong Zhuobing's personal involvement in the excavation turned him into the renowned expert in the field of oracle bone studies. As we examine his oracle bone script seal and read his letter from the Ying Dynasty ruins, our thoughts are let loose to roam the fathomless past, musing over the rise and fall of dynasties, transient as morning dew.